Hello, hope you're doing well. The Nomad Mom here, and today it will be a story time. I'm going to tell you how I got to know I'm pregnant and my pregnancy journey. So let's begin. So when I got to know that I was pregnant, I was in the middle of a major project. We were shooting a documentary called River of Brown Waters, which is out now. I'm going to leave a link down below so that those who have not watched one of my works, one of our works as Nomad Footprints, you get to see. You get to see what we do and uh, you get to understand more of who I am. So as we are shooting the Nomad Footprints, it was around, we started shooting around October 2019. So October and November, that's when we are shooting the first phase of the documentary. On 16th, yeah, I went to the gym, but uh, I did not manage to do what I was supposed to do at the gym. Because when I was trying to exercise, I was feeling like I am not breathing, like I'm suffocating, I'm too tired. So the gym instructor told me, no, you get, get down to sit. I, so I sat down, then I came home. And before, before now going to the gym, I had bought a pregnancy testing, a testing kit. Remember, I had not known whether I'm pregnant. I was just like, let me test to see whether I'm pregnant or anything. Because earlier on, I did not have my contraceptive due to, I had acne. So my acne broke broke out at around June, July and August. So I tried all the contraceptives, but none was working. So the option was, let me at least relax and stay without one to see whether my hormones are going to balance. So all that time, I think I was just paranoid. Let me see, let me just try to, to test. I tested a lot of times, but nothing. But on December, yeah, on December 17th, I decided that now was after I got out of the gym. So I went home, I showered, then I decided, let me test and see. So I tested, I kept away the kit, I showered, then after like 10 minutes, I decided to check and there were the two lines. Yeah, and I was pregnant. And I remember the first thing I said, thank you, God. I was so happy. I started to say, oh, this is my greatest blessing. This is the greatest miracle I've ever had. So I called my partner. I told him, guess what? <laughs> I am pregnant. At first, he thought it was a prank. It was, it, was, it was a joke. Then I actually told him, I'm serious. I'm telling you I'm pregnant. And he was happy. <laughs> and he said, we are going to keep it. That's our child. So, and that's how my journey began. So now after knowing that I was pregnant, so I stayed December. I went to December at home around, I think, 20th. So I stayed the whole of December without telling my mom. But uh, I had nausea, so I couldn't eat. I, I, I couldn't eat. There are some things I couldn't drink. I hated the smell of meat, onions. So I kept like taking cold juice, cold milk and fruits mostly. So I, I used to tell my mom, when you go to town, remember to bring me fruits and milk. So she kept asking my sisters, why is Lisa asking for milk and fruits all the time? So my sister said, ah, we don't know, maybe she's trying to diet or something. So in January, I came back to my place now in Nanyuki. So I stayed in January. So February, that's when I was going to Italy at around, I think, 21st of February. That's when I was going to Italy. So I decided to go home first on the first week of February before now traveling. I want to tell now my parents now I'm pregnant because now I'm traveling to a new continent, a new country, and I am pregnant. So I don't know how the pregnancy is going to survive in the new environment climate and everything so i wanted to tell them so that if anything happens if i get sick or anything they'll understand why so i went home before going home i went to my sister vivian so i went to her place then i i had to call bernie's over so calling them 
I decided to tell them now, you know, you guys have known that I've been pregnant and I want to go home and tell now mom and dad. So I want you to be my support system and <laughs> I will pay your fare, let's go home. So they took me, so we went home. That was on a weekend, the first weekend of February. And uh, on Saturday, we just relaxed. Sunday, my mom, my mom was going to church. So I was like, should I tell her, should I not? Should I tell her, should I not? So my sisters kept saying, you either tell her or we will leave you here as you're going back to school. So, and again, you're a big girl. So I don't know why you're, uh, why you're fearing or why you're scared. So I went ahead and told my mom. So my mom's reaction was kind of funny. She, she was... She wanted to smile, but again, she was trying to hide and pretend that she's serious. Then she just said, let me first go to church. Then I'll call your dad and tell him the news. Then from there, we will know what we'll do. So she went to church. She came back and she started ask, asking, so are you okay? Have you started your clinics? What have the doctors said now that you're traveling? Have the doctors agreed whether you can travel? Then I told her, I'm okay. Everything is okay. Then she was wondering, she was worried actually about the project of the, the shooting of the documentary River of Brown Waters. So how are you going to manage finishing it since you know you are given the funds to shoot? So I told her my partner is going to handle and I have a team. So my dad was called. He was told the news. Of course, as a father <laughs> and me being his daughter, first he didn't, he didn't take it well. He was like scared, so now your career started picking up. You've started like see having visibility in your career. You have a major documentary on the way, you're going to Italy, so how are you going to manage all this? So I said uh, my partner is going to handle everything. And so at first he was not comfortable, but as we proceeded and the pregnancy and he started seeing like things are falling into place, he finally relaxed. So I came back to Nanyuki and I prepared myself to go to Italy. So I went to Italy for one week. And as I went to Italy, my partner was also going to finish up on the documentary, the last parts of it. So when I was in Italy, yeah, I can say, I can't say like uh, I enjoyed so much. I didn't enjoy because I was full of nausea. I was almost I was always getting tired. Then uh, Italy was a bit expensive, so sometimes I wouldn't eat like healthy food because the healthy kind of food was like very expensive since we were spending time in Rome. So, and and I needed like to save and come back home with some money. So I didn't want like to spend more money on hotels and eating and everything. I was uh, attending a conference on, uh, yeah, still on indigenous communities, on biodiversity. And if you want to know more of my work, I'll link down the Nomad Footprints pages so that you can see what we do and what I do as a filmmaker. Yeah, so I came back from Italy. I was just like spending one more week at home. Then the other following week, we were supposed to go for checkup, check whether I was okay, the baby was okay, and all the routines that they always perform when you go for antenatal, antenatal clinic. So they did everything. Everything was fine. Then I was asked, would you want to know the gender? Yeah, and we said yes. And yeah, it was a boy. Yeah. And previously, there was some, uh, when I was in an aeroplane going to Italy, there was a air hostess who told me, ah, I think you're carrying a boy. So yeah, it ended up being a boy, actually. So. And that's when uh, the journey began. But previously, we had started like buying neutral clothes for the baby. That's unisex clothes. So now, when I knew it was a boy, now that's when we began like shopping, doing uh, all these things, going to the market, going to hunt for hospitals. Yeah, so, and by six months, I'd already finished doing my shopping. We had already settled on a hospital. Yeah, and most of the time, remember when I went to Italy, now when I was coming back on March, that's when Corona hit the country and the world, so COVID, that is. So I was just lucky to come back in time because when I came back after, like, I think three days, that's when Italy went to lockdown. So then at around 
just the first week of March, our country also went to lockdown. So mostly I was indoors. I couldn't go anywhere. So all my pregnancy, let me just say I was indoors. The only time I got to go out was when I was going to, let's say, to look for baby's clothes, going to the clinics. Maybe at times my partner will go with me to the supermarket just for exercising or going outside to our, our estate for walks. Yeah, for me to exercise. Those are the only times I will get to go out. The rest of the times I was just indoors. And um, indoors with him, helping him as well to translate on the videos that we're doing. Yeah, basically I, I can say I was partly working when I was still pregnant until maybe the, yeah, now when the ninth month, that was August hit. Yeah, I was working not majorly on the heavy works, maybe replying to emails, calls, because remember, I got pregnant during a major project and I was given funds, so I had to communicate to the people who had given me the funds of shooting the documentary to see the stages of where the documentary had reached and the, of the premiering of August was actually when the documentary was supposed to premiere. And uh, <clears throat> when August reached, everything was fine. We had moved from where we used to live. You know, we had now moved into a bigger house just next. So uh, my sisters were with me. My Yeah, they were with me, helping me around. So on the same August, Frank had gone to, that's my partner, had gone to shoot. So I was left with my sisters. So at... I think it was around, when was it, 15th, 15th, 14th, was that I had started like having cramps, so I thought my stomach was aching due to maybe the beans I had eaten earlier. So I ignored it, that was on 14th at night, I ignored it, so I slept. It was not as severe, it was just like those, those less painful period cramps when you're about to begin your menses. On 15th, that is, I still had the same cramps, so I decided like to tell my mother, ah, Mom, I, had this, I have these cramps. They had begun last night on 14th when I've just eaten beans, so I thought my stomach was aching, but now I feel like it's still there. It's coming, it's going. It's not painful. We just feel like, actually I was feeling like it was the normal menses cramps. So my mom told me, Aya, you, you've just begun your laboring journey. So go to hospital and get checked. So I kept insisting. That was 15th on Saturday. So Frank was coming back on them. So I kept telling my mom, no, me, I'm waiting for Frank so that he comes and takes me. So my mom tell me, told me, you, you don't know. You've slept with the same cramps. So you don't know how many centimeters you've dilated us from now. So now you really need to go to hospital. But thank God I had already packed everything a week earlier. Uh, I had already packed my bag and my baby's bag. So everything was set. So this I just called a taxi. My sisters decided to take me to hospital. It was like a five-minute drive to hospital. So I went. I had left my bags at home because I was just going, maybe let me just go get checked. Maybe it's not as serious because Carl is just... It's due in one one more week to come. So when I went to hospital, I got checked and I was told, you, you've dilated three centimeters. So we are admitting you now. So, and that's how I got admitted on 15th after 